Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we talk about Corona Sun and Sky. Uh, the way Corona Sun and Sky works is that it is trying to resemble the way Sun and Sky appear in real life. So basically, based on the position of the sun in the sky, the sky will try to adjust and mimic how the sky would look like in that specific time of day. So for example, at sunset, when sun is very close to horizon line, the sky would be very orangish and the sun intensity and brightness would be less compared to noon, where the sun is at its highest point and the sky would be very blue and the sun would be very intense. This real-world behavior can be simply replicated using Corona Sun and Sky. So let's get into it and see how it works. As always, let me walk you through what we have in the scene. We have this tree, this bench. Uh, we have also this Corona Scatter object, which scatters about 40,000 patch of grasses and flower uh, in our camera view. Uh, we will be discussing Corona Scatter later on, but for now, let's add our Corona Sun. In the command panel, go to the Corona Lights, and here you can find Corona Sun. Or, as always, let's use the Corona Toolbar and select Corona Sun, and start clicking and dragging in the top view. In the front view, you can decide on the elevation of the sun as you increase its height you go from sunset to noon let me just uh, roughly position the sun in the top and the front view if i run the interactive rendering you notice that yes we have created the sun but still there is no sky if you select the sun and go to its modify panel here you have this add Corona Sky environment and if you click on it, a Corona Sky will be added to the environment. If you just uh, press the 8 button to open up the environment and effects window, you can see a Corona Sky has been added to the environment. We can edit this Corona Sky in the material editor to control how exactly it looks and control parameters like turbidity, but the overall look of the sky will be determined by how we position the sun in our scene and how close or far is the sun from the horizon line. Now let's run the interactive rendering again. The first issue that we have here is the render is overexposed. So let's decrease the exposure by four stops and set it to negative four. I'm also going to increase the highlight compression to around 2.5 so we can see the sun disk. Hopefully it will be visible through the recording because of the dynamic range that we're dealing with. Increasing the highlight compression basically reduces the effect of burning in the brightest parts of the render. Now, as I'm changing the sun position in the front view, you can clearly see how as I'm getting closer to the horizon, the sun gets darker and the sky gets warmer and more orangish. And as I increase its height, we get a hotter sun and a bluer sky. And as I move in between, you can see how dramatically the placement of the sun changes the lighting in the scene and how the sky looks. Also, if I wanted to in the top view, I can go ahead and obviously change the direction of the sun. Let's just move the sun a bit and uh, kind of put it where we can actually see the sun disk in the render. If I select the Corona sun, you notice we have two very self-explanatory options. Intensity controls the overall intensity and brightness of the sun. So if I go from 1 to 5, we immediately get a more intense sun, which is much brighter. And if set to something like 0.2, it will be less intense and the lighting is dominated by the sky. Let me put it back to 1, which is the physically accurate volume. Then we have the size of the sun, which controls two things. 
the size of the visible sun disk and the sharpness of the shadows produced by the sun just to make sure that you can clearly see the sun disk in the render and through the recording I'm going to increase the highlight compression even more to something like 10. When the size is set to 1 we get these clear sharp shadows from the sun but if we increase the size to a higher value like 10 we get a bigger visible sun disk and much diffuser shadows you can get crazy with this value and if we set it to something like 30 you can see how big the disk gets and how diffuser the shadows are let's set it back to 1 down here you can control the color of the sun by default it's set to realistic which is what you should be using normally but you can use other colors that you want so if I select direct input I can change the color of my sunlight to any weird color that I want. Let's set it back to realistic again and now take a quick look at the Corona Sky options. For now, let's stop uh, the interactive rendering. Press 8 and M to open up Environment and Effects window and Material Editor respectively. Now instance the Corona Sky in the material editor and now we can close the environment window. Let me just rearrange this remaining window so we can see what is happening and run the interactive rendering again. To create a new Corona Sky map, you can simply right click in the active view of the material editor and go to Maps, Corona, and here you can find the Corona Sky Map and then manually assign it to the environment. But we did it automatically using the options in the Corona Sun. First, we have the sky models, which are basically different procedural sky textures. We have three options here, and I hope not to butcher the names. Hozik and Wilkie, Pritham and Rawa Fake. The uh, Hozik and Wilkie model is the most physically accurate and realistic one. And if I change the model to Pritham, we get slightly different colors and tones. And we have a Rawa fake model, which is totally fake Aruni. And this model allows for some imaginary sky colors. And down here in its parameters, you can manually control the zenith and the horizon color of the sky. You can select any color that you want, then probably match the color of your Corona Sun uh, with them in its modify panel and get a nice sky and sun coloring. For now, let's change the model to Hozik and Wilkie. And here we have a bunch of self-explanatory parameters as well. Uh, turbidity controls the overall amount of particles, aerosols, and pollutants in the sky. The lower the volume, the clearer the sky, and the higher the volume, the hazier it gets. Let me set it back to, point, uh, to the default value of 2.5, or simply right-click on the spinner to do that. Intensity controls the overall brightness of the sky. If I set it to something like 0.1, it gets much darker, and if set to something like um, you know 2 or 3, uh, it gets very, very bright. One is the physically accurate value. The next option is Horizon Blur, which controls how sharp or blurred the horizon line is. To see this parameter a bit better, let's go to our second corner camera, which reveals a bit more of the sky, and run the interactive rendering again. If set to zero, you can see the line is very sharp and if something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or higher values up to 1 are used, the horizon line, line uh, gets blurrier. We have ground color which determines the color of the ground in the corona sky. And as I change the ground color, you can see the color of the ground is changing in the sky model. Let's use the default color. Now we can stop the rendering and go back to our first camera. We can change the placement of the sun and render out different looks. 
you can find those renders in the uh, render output folder for this lesson in your project files. I'm gonna just uh, actually show you a few of those renders here. Just simply change the position of the sun and try to get some nice shots. You can obviously use this uh, color correction tools in your Corona frame buffer. You have a curve, you can do white balance and everything with the final render if you wanted to. Uh, for one of them, the sun was about here, basically the same position uh, that we have our sun uh, right now. And uh, just simple color correction was applied, just increasing the contrast and the filmic shadows a bit. For the sunset shot, the sun was placed about here. If we run the interactive rendering, I can uh, show you the exact placement. And uh, for this shot, the sunset shot basically, the sun size was increased to about three, so we get what we're looking for artistically. Also, well, when the render was basically finished, uh, I turned on effects like bloom and glare, which you have access to right here in the corona frame buffer. Uh, you know, to get a more dramatic shot, it's really up to you. And for another one, the sun was placed uh, behind the tree about here. For the final render, uh, I rendered them for like 32 passes. You can actually uh, limit the render to 32 passes in your render settings if you wanted to, or you can just start the render and whenever you are kind of satisfied with the results and saw no noise and a clear render, you can stop the render at a time. And uh, like always, I had full denoising with the amount of 0.65. And now you can basically go ahead and start the final render and enjoy your corona rendering. In this lesson, we learned about corona sun and sky. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.